All right, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Button Down Fellowship. Uh, <clears throat> uh, again, thank God for all of you that are here. Uh, and thank God for you guys making it uh, out tonight. I uh, just want to say a quick thank you to Brother Leonard uh, and uh, Sister Raina there. They came down from Ohio to be with us again. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was the weather. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize it. Yeah. 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 They're down to be with us for our friends and family day. And uh, awesome, uh, uh, so they're here with us tonight, and they'll be there with us on Sunday. Uh, uh, so we thank God for that. And also, Sister Miriam is back with us. Yeah. Uh, she was yeah. out for a while. We've been we've been praying for you, and we missed you. Uh, Don't tell them we and, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, But thank, no, we did ask thankfully you're back now. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and as you and as you said, uh, I thank God that you're being edified. Uh, as a teacher of the word, uh, even as Paul says in Romans 1, uh, really what happens is when you teach, if the student is learning based on what they know, uh, as you said, when you go to somebody else, you can hear the difference. Not so much me as an individual, but the word of God. Okay, Amen. Paul says, for us, first that's on his two, you receive the word of God as in truth from hearing it from me. Okay, so that's that's the the glory in it is the word of God. So now that you are being edified, when you go somewhere else, and now they don't teach the Bible uh, as God ha intends for us to learn the Bible and study the Bible rightly divided, uh, you you, you notice the difference. Yes, uh, you really notice the difference. So thank God for you uh, uh, in that praise report. We thank God for that. Uh, let's continue to <clears throat> pray for one another. Uh, also. Uh, uh, let's continue to uh, invite people out to our friends and family day. Uh, sounds like we should have a pretty good turnout. Uh, I know we'll have some people uh, that are coming, so we have, should have a good, pretty good turnout, uh, and everything <clears throat> should be should be good with that. So we're planning on that. We're getting up towards that in March uh, for this Sunday, and so we'll have that going uh, as well. Uh, go ahead and turn down the book of uh, James. Uh, and we'll get here. We'll go ahead and start our study here. Uh, the book of James, I really wanted to uh, get into this book simply because it's one of those books that are oftentimes uh, misunderstood, uh, just like the book of Hebrews, especially in terms of dealing with the context uh, and the dispensational understanding of this book. Okay, A lot of people, uh, uh, the famous passage in here, uh, Faith Without Works is Dead, uh, which totally uh, contradicts what Paul is saying. Uh, in Romans 4 and 5 when he says to him that worketh not to him uh, as faith is counted as righteous okay uh, and so they both use examples of Abraham one when Abraham was justified by just believing and then when Abraham was justified by working okay uh, uh, justification is justification is justification all right so whenever the Bible speaks about justification uh, it doesn't mean one thing over here and then another thing over here because some people would suppose that Paul, that uh, uh, James is talking about, well, justification as it pertains to how we ought to behave after we're saved. Well, that's not the term, but the, fun, the definition of justification. Justification means to be declared righteous. So when Pete James uses the word justification, all right, uh, uh, in James 2 and verse uh, 24, he says, you see then how that by works a man is justified, okay, and not by faith only. All right, so that's specifically saying a man is not accounted righteous by just faith only, but he needs works. Paul is specifically saying justification uh, 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 without any works, okay? So those are two seemingly contradictory things if you don't rightly divide, okay? Uh, so you can't just, you know, say anything and muddle these things up together, okay, and as if they're talking about the same thing because the same term justification is being used. So if justification is justification, then you can't say one is talking about justification unto eternal life, and then the other is talking about justification on how you ought to live. It's the same. Justification is justification, okay? And so we're going to get into that today. Now, uh, go to James 1 and 1, uh, and as you're turning there, we'll have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your love, your kindness, your understanding. We just thank you for who you are. Uh, we thank you now for your word. We thank you for salvation as a present possession. Uh, we just thank you right now for life, health, and strength, oh God. We thank you for the mind that we're able to study your word, oh God. We thank you for waking up in our right mind. Uh, we thank you for uh, all the things that you've done for us, the provisions that you set forth before us. 
Uh, we thank you right now for the door of utterance uh, that may be open, that we may preach the gospel uh, so that men may be saved. For that is your will, that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We actually continue to bless this church family as we continue to, and this ministry as we go, uh, go forth teaching the word, uh, the rightly divided word, the unadulterated truth, uh, even in the midst of persecution. We ask you to give us grace, give us strength uh, as we continue to walk in this present and evil world being ambassadors for you. Uh, we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Uh, also, uh, one of my uh, good friends that I grew up with, uh, his father just passed away uh, uh, last week. Uh, so I'll actually be going to a funeral on Saturday in Avon Park. Uh, I think it's, I think that's about an hour from here. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, yeah, I grew up with him. Uh, my, um, my mother and his mother uh, are pretty much their best friends. Uh, when we first moved to Tampa, that's one of the first families that we, that we met. Okay, and so uh, yeah, his father passed away. Uh, I haven't actually had a chance to talk with him yet, uh, but I'm going to probably go to the funeral on Saturday uh, to be with him. So let's pray for him. His name is Jarvis. Uh, so let's pray for him. <clears throat> Uh, um, and uh, that's a, a tough thing to lose anybody, but to lose a parent, uh, uh, I can only imagine, okay, uh, that has to be the, uh, one of the toughest things ever, okay? So we'll pray for God's uh, comfort and peace uh, in this time of uh, grief, grieving for him. Uh, so we thank God for, for that. <clears throat> now, uh, James chapter 1 we're talking about uh, 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 James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. And we talked about, we were going, talking about Sunday about these 12 tribes, okay? Uh, most times when you were studying the Bible, you have to understand who the book is talking to in order to fully understand the context in which the Bible is written. All right, uh, the, the Bible is meant to be studied, okay? Uh, not just a cursory reading where you just read over something, but the God wants us to study his word because to study is how we show ourselves what? Approved, approved unto him, okay? And we all want to be approved uh, uh, when we're talking about God, okay? And so studying is how we do that, all right? God does not leave us empty because he gives us a way to study his word, all right? And most people who are ignorant of this, uh, of how to rightly divide, uh, are not getting the benefits uh, that God desires for us to have all right, when we seek the word. Uh, when we deal with the word, and we fully, uh, we're not fully, but when we understand the word uh, as the Holy Ghost teaches it to us, all right, that, uh, we can really begin to transform our thinking. All right, okay, we, we, we no longer think selfishly and act selfishly unto ourselves, uh, but we offer ourselves as a reasonable sacrifice uh, 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 as a living sacrifice, excuse me, which is our reasonable service, okay? And so that's, all that is based on how we study and to show ourselves approved because God is not going to uh, throw himself upon you and make you do something, okay? Uh, so, so that's what we have to be cautious of. So when we talk about James, uh, it specifically states right here who he's talking to. All right, and so now we understand simply by the first verse that everything in this book, everything in the book of James is not applicable to us, but it is for our what? Learning. learning, okay, because all the Bible is for us to learn, all right? The more I understand the Bible, uh, regardless of dispensation, the more I understand God, okay, all right? And then when I understand uh, the Bible from a dispensational context, now I fully understand what God is doing and how he did it, how he's doing it, and how he's going to do it, okay? And so that's the benefit of a believer, uh, especially those of us who know truth, how, we, uh, how to really know God, okay? Because there are a lot of people, uh, like I say, they know about him, but they don't really know him. And partly this because they read passages and automatically put themselves in the passage, okay? All right, so now James is talking about these 12 tribes. Go to Acts chapter 1. Uh, we spoke a little bit about this on Sunday. <clears throat> Uh, dealing with these 12 tribes. Go to Acts chapter 8 and look at verse 1. Because not only is it just talking about the 12 tribes, but specifically James is talking about those who are what? Scattered abroad. Scattered abroad, okay? So he's specifically talking about those who are scattered abroad, greeting, okay? So he's specifically telling you who he's talking to, all right? And then as we go through it, we're going to get uh, the understanding of what he's talking about as he's talking to this particular audience, okay? Look at Acts chapter 8 and look at verse number 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death, 
all right, uh, his death speaking about uh, Stephen, Stephen, okay? And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at what? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So now, let's go over a little bit to go back to chapter 7 real quick. Just, I uh, just want to point this out really quick. Uh, let me see. Can I find it in here? Uh, Forty. It's what's that? I see fifty-four. Fifty-four. No, no, no. Hold on one second. Let me get it. Okay, I can't see this. It's in here somewhere, but I can't see it. But I, uh, okay, thirty-eight. There we go. All right, thirty-eight. Look at Acts seven thirty-eight. Uh, I want to point out this because who is Paul? Uh, uh, who is being persecuted? In Acts 8 and 1. The church, but the church where? Which was at Jerusalem, okay? So I want to point this out because every time you see the word church, most people think it's always talking about the same group of people. Church just means the, uh, 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 a called out assembly, okay? Look at verse 38 of Acts 7. This is he that was in the what? Church. Where? In the wilderness. Which is not the same church as the church of Jerusalem, which is not the same church as the church, the body of Christ. Okay, so these are three different churches throughout the Bible. There's a church in the wilderness called out assembly. That's all it is. Church which was at Jerusalem in which Paul was persecuting here. And then there's the church which is his body, which is those of us in the body of Christ. So first of all, the first uh, sometimes I ask people, well, what church are uh, what church are you in? A part of? All right. Then they're going to tell me their natural church, of course. All right. Then I ask them, okay, spiritually speaking, what church are you a part of? All right, and then they'll say something about the body, body of Christ because everybody talks about the body of Christ and grace and everything today. Uh, but then their doctrine is taken from a church that had instructions prior to. Okay, uh, So look at this. Go back to Acts 8 and 1. So the church here, which is at Jerusalem, all right, is talking about these Jews okay, in Jerusalem. All right, because remember, they, were, they could not leave what? Jerusalem. All right? Look at this, uh, verse Acts 8 and 1. And Saul was consented unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all what? Scattered abroad. Scattered abroad, okay? Now, things that differ cannot be the what? The same. Same. Things that are similar cannot be the what? Same. But things that are the same are what? The, the same. same. So these individuals that were scattered abroad, which were part of the church which was at Jerusalem, is the same people to whom James is writing. You see that? And so if you weren't a part of this church, which was at Jerusalem, which none of us are, were or are, then how can James be writing to you? What year was the church destroyed in Jerusalem? 70 AD. Uh, as opposed to where they are now. 30 years Right. Right. Uh-huh. And then 30 years later, the church was destroyed. Somewhere in there, you know how the timeline yeah, is. Yeah, I, yeah. I go to the 90 and then forget about it. Yeah. The thing below that, I kind of forget. Right, 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 right. But right. the church was destroyed after the And, and the temple was destroyed. Yeah, the Not temple, so much yeah, the church. I right, right, right. Yeah, the temple. yeah, I knew what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, the temple was destroyed then. And that was at Jerusalem. And right. that was, that with, was foretold, or wasn't it? Right, which is, which is why you have the people now trying to build that temple again. But when in Revelation it talks about when Christ comes back, he's the temple made without hands. Right. You see that? So anybody building the temple now is for the Antichrist to sit there. Hmm. You see that? They don't even understand what's going on because they don't understand yeah, biblical prophecy. Yeah. Right. Isn't this the way they explain that? Some of the congregations, some of the denominations explain that with replacement theology. Right, yeah, yeah. This is how this is where they get it from, absolutely. Yeah. They say we became them. Exactly. We yeah. became them and took their place. Uh, but that's not so because if that's the case, then that makes God a liar. Uh, because what he started, he has to what? Finish. Okay. So he can't give Gentiles something that he promised Israel and didn't say, all right, everything is cool. All right, because then he wouldn't be true to who he is. All right. And then if that's the case, uh, then we're all doomed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, look at this. All right, so uh, Acts 8, verse 1, 
the end of verse 1, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the who? The apostles. Except the apostles, okay? Now, therefore, look at verse 4. And this is why you have to study your Bible. Uh, well, let's... So let's read verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to what? Prison. To prison. Okay, Paul was something else. All right? Just like some of us in our past life. All right? All right. Look at verse 4. Therefore, they that were what? Scattered Went everywhere preaching the what? The word. See, so now this fulfills the great commission because they went everywhere preaching the word. All right? Now, watch this. Go back up to Acts 8 and 1. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the who? Apostles. Except the apostles. Where were they? Stayed in Jerusalem. Why? That's what Christ's instructions to them were. Okay? So the others were scattered, but they stayed. Okay? And they were most likely hiding. All right? All right. Yes. Uh, when you said they preached the word, Remember when they were told that they should not go farther than where? All right. <laughs> so now all of a sudden this word spread and went east? It, 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 it's going. Now, it, it, if I read this verse, it would make it seem as though the Great Commission, as people call it, is in, a, is in effect here. Yeah. Because it says specifically, therefore they that were scattered abroad went where? Everywhere. Everywhere preaching the word. So in Acts, it talks about they uh, going to Judea, the uttermost parts of uh, Judea, Samaria, all those areas which were in Jerusalem, then to the uttermost parts of the earth. All right, Matthew 19, uh, 28 tells them to go to all the world preaching the gospel, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, uh, go to Acts 11. And look at verse 19. Now they which were scattered. So the same people that are we that are in Acts 8, which was at the church of Jerusalem, and the same people that James is talking to, now it says, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about who? Stephen. So this lets us know the context of verse 19 here is dating uh, uh, is back when? And what verse? The same, the same one we just read because Acts 8 when Paul was wrecking havoc it was because of who? The, de the death of what? Stephen. He considered it to the death of Stephen. So this tells us exactly what we need to know. So they now they arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phineas, Cyprus and Antioch and went everywhere preaching the word to everybody. None but none. 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 See that? See so this gives see God is the best interpreter of himself and I love when you really study the Bible, because it said they went everywhere to preach the word, but then here, the same context, it says they only went to preach to who? To the, to the Jews, which is the same people who James is writing to when we talk about the scattered abroad. This is, the, I mean, this is, this is almost like what they call simple arithmetic, okay? Mm -hmm. This is just, this is easy here. I mean, this is just looking at a word on a page, reading it, and then comprehending, okay? This is grade school stuff here. All right, because this is just simple. Okay, if I'm if it says scattered abroad, and it says scattered abroad, and then it says scattered, that that's the same group or the same audience. All right, if you were not the people that were scattered abroad uh, because of the persecution of Stephen, then this isn't talking to you. It's for you to learn at this point. All right, so when we look at these things, this how is how we understand the context of what the Bible is talking about. Okay, go to uh, go to one more. Go to uh, Matthew. Uh, go to Luke first. Go to Luke. Go to Luke 24. Do you know the Wi-Fi connection? Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't remember it. That was, that was yeah. Yeah, you, it, it's in there. If you want to yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go get, yeah, go get it. Yeah, it's all right. Go get, yeah, go get it. If you it saw it, you'd know it, right? Huh? If you saw it, you would know it, right? Yeah, it's, it's mud something. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's in there, the room, if you guys want it. Yeah, that's a, that's fine. Go, yeah, go to Luke twenty four. It's in that room right there. No, no, no. The next one, yeah, right there. Yeah, on the back of the thing, it's it's mud yeah, something. Yeah. All right, look at Luke twenty four, and let's look at verse. Uh, let me see. Let's see all right, let's look at verse. 
Let's look at verse 46. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right, look at verse 46. Saint, uh, uh, Luke 24, 46. And he said, and said unto them, This is written, thus it is written, and thus it is behold, behold Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, that what? Third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning where? At Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. Everything you do, and ye are witnesses of these things. Everything happens and starts where? In Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Right? Because of this particular audience, which were Jews. All right? Let's go to one more. Uh, go to Zechariah. Go to Zechariah. Nahum, Habakkuk, Haggai. Oh, Zephaniah is in there somewhere, too. <laughs> Yeah, go to Zechariah. Yeah. Go to Zechariah 13. Zechariah what? 13. Dealing with this issue of scattered abroad, okay? Look at verse um and look at verse 6. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my what? Right. Now, who is this in the context this speaking about? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, now, based on the context and the actual time this was written, who would they have thought this was speaking about? Probably, what they call him, John the Baptist or something like that. Uh-uh, they wouldn't have known him either. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, uh, uh, in what? In who context? spoke to them, who spoke to them in time past? Oh, no, huh? No, God Himself. God Himself spoke to them and guided them and led them. Okay, He was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so now, when at what point was God? This is a good verse to show the Jehovah Witnesses. At what point was God ever pierced? Huh? Huh? Okay, so so because Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that Jesus is God. Okay, but at what point? Because this isn't Jesus talking here. This is God, okay? So so at what point was God wounded or uh, uh, in his hands in the house of his friends? Uh, that's, all the time. that's the only time he was wounded in the house. I said, I came into my own and my own what? Receive me not. You see that the only time he was, was uh, 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 pierced in his hands was at the cross. Okay? So that makes Jesus God. Uh-huh. And isn't it an account when Judas um, brought them to him when Jesus did call them friend? Right, yeah, yeah. So I think that's why he referred to the friend. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, because it was his own friend that, that betrayed him. And most of the times, your friends and people that you love are going to hurt you the most. You see that? Because, because, because those are the people that actually... Uh, can get to you. People that don't know you, they can say anything. It doesn't matter. They don't know me. Right. All right. And so, so understand it was a friend that betrayed him. All right. And it was his own friends that wounded him. All right. Look at verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, said the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be what? Scattered. And I will turn mine hand upon the what? The on the little ones. So this is a prophecy about the scattering that would happen. So this same prophecy is about who? Jews, which are the same people that James is talking about. All right, let's go back to James chapter 1. Uh, matter of fact, while we're back here, go to uh, Jeremiah 31. Because the scattered matter when it comes to uh, the Bible, okay? Uh, you just can't say, oh, this is talking about all of us. All of us are scattered all over the world now. Uh, yeah, the, but specifically, the scattered were those who were Jews that were in Jerusalem that were scattered from Jerusalem, okay? Look at uh, chapter uh, 31 of Jeremiah, and let's look at verse 10. Look at chapter 31 of Jeremiah, and look at verse 10. Uh, no, that's don't. Oh, that's chapter 30. Okay, I was, that don't look right there. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, look at 31. Look at verse 10. Mm -hmm. hear, the, hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the, in the isles afar off, and say, He that what? Scattered who? Israel. Okay, I was just making sure my Bible said the same thing as yours. Mm -hmm. All right, so now scattered Israel will what? Gather him. And keep him as a shepherd does his what? Flock. Flock. So God caused them to be scattered because of the persecution, all right, which has to do a lot with their uh, 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 lack of faith, all right? And so he's going to gather these same people that he wants what? Scattered. So how can we take their place if God has promised all of these things? Mm -hmm. Then that would make God a liar. Mm -hmm. So when you don't study the Bible dispensationally, you have all of this stuff running together with them and their us and all of this stuff coming together when specifically the Bible keeps them separate for a reason. For a specific reason. God, uh, the Bible keeps them separate, okay? Look at, uh, look at the end of this verse. Gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his as his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was what? Stronger that was stronger than he. Okay, go to Isaiah. Look at chapter 10. Yes, Isaiah chapter 10, and let's look at verse number 20. Uh, when you read the Old Testament, this is a beauty. Uh, when you really, uh, 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 it, uh, most people accuse us for only studying Paul's epistles. Uh, uh, but when you really study the Old Testament, we study the whole Bible, okay? Uh, when you really read the Old Testament, these verses, especially once you understand truth and how to rightly divide, these verses just come together. And it, it's just a thing of beauty, at least it is to me. Okay, it's just a thing of beauty how these things tie together. Look at Isaiah chapter 10 and look at verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return even the what? Remnant of Jacob. Unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, how, why are they as the sand of the sea? Because they're what? Yeah. Scattered abroad. There you go. Same things, okay? All right. Yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with what? Righteousness. Righteousness. This is the consumption that was decreed. Okay, God decreed this, and he declared these things have to, have to happen. He's going to scatter them, but he's going to be the one to what? Bring them back together. Okay? For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of what? All the land. All the land. Okay, go to John. Chapter number 10. Are we talking about the... Right, uh huh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. So the sand, we'll go there in a minute after this. Yeah. Okay. So the sand of the seas is not referring to the number, just the fact that they are scattered. Right now, uh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, uh, when Jesus, when God spoke with Abraham, what did He tell him? That you count, count the what. Oh, the the stars. Stars. All right, and, and now, so can, can, who can do that? Nobody. nobody All right, so it takes that. faith to believe that, okay? This is the whole point. Now, nobody can count sand, okay? You can't count the little minerals of sand, which means they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So now, and this is a good point that you brought up. God knows who they are. You see that? Even if they don't know who they are themselves, God knows who they are. And we'll go to Revelation to see this, all right? But first, go to John chapter 10. That's a good, good point. Look at John chapter 10. All right, look at John chapter 10. Look at verse number 11. All 
I am the what? Good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the what? Sheep. For the sheep. Okay. Now, look at uh, verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming to leave the sheep and flee, then the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the what? Sheep. Sheep. See that? See now, the wolf, which is uh, pretty much the Pharisees at this time, all right, who were very religious and traditional, okay, like most people are today, have scattered them, okay, all right. Uh, uh, and, and what happens is the same reference that we read as a uh, in Isaiah as a shepherd that uh, uh, that calleth forth the flock. This is the same way as Jesus Christ is the what good shepherd. All right, people look at this John chapter ten, and it gets to uh, look at verse sixteen. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this what? Fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one what? Shepherd. Now, I asked the brother the other day, I said, now, who is this other fold? All right. And he said, oh, that's Gentiles. So I said, okay, let me send you something. And then you, uh, talk to me after you read it. All right, so I sent them something. He said, well, uh, based on uh, what, what you read, I wouldn't say that they're Jew, that they're Gentiles anymore. I would say that they're elect Jews. Uh, uh, I say, well, okay, that sounds good. So, so because most people think that this is talking about Gentiles. Right. Based on what we just read, who was scattered and who's going to be brought back together as one? The Israel, the Jews. It's not talking about Gentiles, okay? So then he said the elect Jews simply because he said, I just can't... Uh, 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 he, he put it some kind of way as if it was no possibility, uh, for lack of better words. I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said there's no way possible that the readers of the of the audience here would have been thinking about uh, uh, disper Jews that were dispersed. He said these have to be elect Jews because they wouldn't have even been thinking about that. I said, okay, go. Let's go back. To, I said, go back three chapters and go to chapter seven. All right, look at. Chapter 7 and look at verse 35. Then said the who? Jews. Which is the same people he's talking about in John 10. Okay. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we should not find him? Will he go unto the what? The among the who? Gentiles. Now, so I, I sent him this verse and he said, Interesting. <laughs> Let me continue to keep reading. I said, Amen. I said, You just keep reading, okay? Because, because understand, the sheep that are not of this fold are the ones who are what? Scattered abroad. You see, that it makes perfect sense when you understand Scripture, okay? You can go back and see exactly who this is. Why did he use the shepherd as being a good shepherd as it, as it regards to sheep? What is, what's significant about sheep? They have to be led. Huh? They're dumb. They need to be led. We're, we're, we have the mind of Christ. How can we be sheep? We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. How can we be sheep? Sheep are being conquered. All right? Sheep are being conquered at, 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 at an alarming rate. Even Paul, when he mentions this in, in Romans chapter 8, okay, let's go there real quick. I just... This is important, but I just thought about this. So let, let's go there real quick. Let's go to Romans 8. We're not, the sheep not of this fold are the ones who were scattered abroad. So James is talking about the same people who John was talking about and who which Christ was talking about that he has to go get. Because Christ, because he is God, is talking about the same thing God the Father was talking about. And that he got, he scattered them, and now he has to come bring them what all together. Their new covenant, Jeremiah thirty one talks about. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. All right, and how they will be what one. You see that all of this stuff runs together. So I had a brother, another person, point out to me what Paul calls us sheep. I say, oh really? Well, what verse is that? Okay, and so he brought me to this verse. Okay, watch this. Chapter 8, look at verse 36. See, this is what happens when you take a concordance, all right, and you look up a word, and you just go to the verse without understanding the context, okay? Now, look at verse 36. As it is what? Written. Written. So Paul is quoting something here, and he says, For thy sake we are killed all what? Day long. All the day long. Now, this is a quote from Psalms 44, okay? All the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the what? Wow. So this means that Paul is saying that we're sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now let's go back to verse 35 and let's get a little context, okay? All right, now. a long way away. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Question mark, right? Yeah. All right. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He's asking a question here. And then he gives an answer as it is written for we're sheep slaughtered all the day long. Now, verse 35's questions is being answered in verse 37. And the first word of verse 37 is what? Nay. Okay, now, so now when you read and study the Bible in context, <laughs> he's given an example of those who are sheep and how they're being slaughtered, but we're more than that. Who shall yeah. separate us and who to, to, from the love of God? Who, uh, uh, tribulation, distress. We're not. Be, we're being persecuted, but we're more than conquerors. Right. Then he gives the verse thirty-seven, nay, which means no for the people who can't understand the King's English. Okay, <laughs> it means just no. That's the answer. All right. Now, in all these things, we are more than what conquerors through Him that loved us. We're not sheep being thrown to the slaughter, although we may be persecuted for the cause of Christ. Okay, we have the mind of Christ. We're not looking for to be led as dumb sheep. Mm. Paul is talking to mature Christians. Amen. You see that? So it has nothing to do with the sheep not of that fold. The sheep not of this fold has everything to do with those who are what? Scattered abroad. And they're not, they're not told to put all the armor on. There you go. There you go. Yep. Ephesians 6, 10. Put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. I don't see sheep putting on armor. They don't, they're not putting on the armor. <laughs> Too dumb to do so. Right? Now, there are some people who think they're sheep and they're uh, equivalent to what the sheep means. They're ignorant of the word. You see that? So, so understand, people who want to be sheep, all right, do not recognize their position in Christ. Right. You see that? I don't want to be a sheep. Christ has given me the tools in order to that I may defend myself. And the only tool that he's given me that's an offensive weapon is the what? Sword. Is the sword, which is the what? The which word. is the word. Amen. So if I'm ignorant of the word, then I'm very well, might as well be a sheep. That's right. Because I have no I have no power otherwise, okay? Uh now let's go to Revelation 7 real quick, talking about these Jews and yeah. Well, I still thought I was a sheep. And the and the thing is you thought as you as a sheep because that's what your mind said. Right, right. And so and, and so a, a lot of times and we even use all right, we, there's a, a a bishop in our old church. He even has the little shepherd thing, right by the pole, right by the pulpit. And so, because we're because we were ignorant of the word, we thought really, woo, this is the shepherd God sent them for the flock, you know. And so, people are just that ignorant to be sheep, not holding the people up here, holding this cane and all this dressed up and all this attire and jewelry and all this, not holding them accountable to the word. Because guess what? They're just as ignorant as you. Just because you stand up here, don't make you qualified now. Okay, that doesn't make you qualified. Now, anybody could stand up here, okay, if they have the desire to do so. All right, doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't require, I'm speaking naturally here, it doesn't require, okay, to understand God's word. Naturally speaking, it doesn't require that. If you have a desire, you go to your church administration, you tell them you want to preach, they're going to put you up there. Right, and you make sure you pay your tithe. Right, right, right. And they're gonna put you wherever you want to be. Okay, you want to be the church mother, they'll put you there. It doesn't matter as long as you paying money. You can be ignorant as you want to be, because truth is not really the 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 the, 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 the uh, forefront for them. Okay, it's titles and positions and all these things. Because when I took my, I took a uh, a ordination te uh, test, as they call it, when I got ordained in the other ministry, uh, other church as an elder. Okay, and uh, there was a bunch of questions on me. The only question that was about the Bible was what Old Testament writer writes as though he should be in the New Testament? That was the only biblical question I had. And then what is what does soteriology mean? All right, pneumatology. It's just that they, soteriology is the study of Christ. Pneumatology is the study of end times. Okay, so so there's a lot of you know they use all this jargon and all these big words try to make you seem like you're so smart. 
Uh, but really, that don't, that's the only biblical question they asked me. So I didn't have to know. It. Now, I had to know it. They asked me a bunch of stuff about the church. Who was the first bishop of the church? Who was the first church mother? Who was this? And, who, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, like, I don't know, and I don't even care. What difference does that make whether I know who that is? You know, I didn't know the answer, and I didn't even care, okay? So, 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 so a lot of times... You don't even have to know about the Bible to be standing up here, but yet the people standing up here are, are deemed the shepherd and everybody else is the sheep. And guess what? Rightfully so. Because the people out there, including myself at the time, was just as ignorant as sheep. You see that? Look at Revelation 7. Look at verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were what? Sealed and, and 44,000 of all the tribes, the children of who? Israel. Israel. Go to Revelation 21. And then if you keep reading in verse 7, it goes through the different, different of the 12 tribes. And 12,000 from each tribe. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Look at Revelation 21 here. And look at verse 12. Yes. Revelation 21 and verse 12. Now this is talking about this uh, new heaven and this new earth, okay? Yeah. And the city that's coming down. Yeah. Excuse me now. And had a wall great and high and, there, and had what? Twelve. Angels. And at the gates twelve what? Angels. And names written thereon. Which are the names of the what? Twelve tribes of the children of Israel. There we go. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, and all these things that talks about these gates that were in this that was in this thing. So the, when it talks about the scattered, it does matter when it specifically states that. When you read your Bible and you just skip over that, because to make yourself the audience in James 1 and 1, you have to make yourself the audience in John 10 and Isaiah and Zechariah and all the books back there that we just that we just read. Because all of them talk about the same people. The same people, all right? Go back to James, yeah. Go back to James 1. I got one. two questions because it just popped up real quick. All right, go ahead. Okay, let's go with the first question. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the first question is, we said that when Stephen was killed, uh -huh. he was killed by those who were scattered abroad and not the ones in Jerusalem. No, 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 they were scattered because of that. Oh, they, afterwards. Right, okay. right. That's Acts 8. Okay, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. because, and they were scattered because Paul, who consented unto Stephen's death, was the one wrecking havoc on the church. Okay. Yeah. And the next question has to do with the times of the tribulation. When you said that the 144, there are going to be more Jews than that, but they're telling Gentiles at that time to... What? Latch on to, to the skirt of a Jew. Right. And remember, the, it talks about the Jew, not all Israel is, is going to be saved because they're just Israel. Because remember, in Isaiah, we just read, there was a what? Remnant. There's always a remnant, okay? Which is not everybody, but a remnant of the whole. Right. But what I mean by when you're talking to the tribulation, it tells you right off the bat. You hook on the one right, the right. and head for the money. And see, and this is, the, this, is the, the, and this is part of the mystery. It's not that Gentiles would be saved. Gentiles could be saved back here, or, or at, at least justified unto salvation back here. Okay, that was not a mystery. The mystery is now it's without uh, outside of the nation of Israel without the law. Now Gentiles can be justified and saved eternally without the Israel with Israel's fall as opposed to their rise. You see that? You see that? And so, so understand that is part of the mystery. Uh, people say, oh, Gentiles are being saved way back here. Yeah, you're right. I agree. I definitely agree with you back here. I'll just say, and they can be saved without enduring. And they can be saved immediately. Yeah. They didn't have to wait for the promise. Exactly. Because in uh, so Hebrews 11.39, uh, the Hall of Faith chapter, it says, all of these having obtained a good report of faith still have yet to receive what? The promise. promise. Even uh -huh. no works of theirs. Huh? Neither was it by any works of their own. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, good point. Go back to uh, James 1. Uh, what did I say? Did I say? Uh, James. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, let's go back to James real quick. Yeah, we're just talking about the scattered. Yeah. We're still on the first verse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
thought this was gonna be a great book. It's a short book. It's a short book. It's a little short book. It's a little short book. It's a little short book. Now, before we get the rest of it, might go a little a little quicker. Yeah, but I want I wanted to really give you the introduction so you fully understand. All right, the purpose of this book, who it was writing to. So now, when you go, when we go through it, that'll be in the back of your mind. Okay, normally. The introductions are always, they take a little longer with the introductions, all right? Mm -hmm. So usually, because there's a lot of information that I want, I don't want to miss uh, uh, at the beginning, okay? Now, verse 2, woo, James 1, verse 2, all right? Before, yes. Before you get to verse 2. <laughs> 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 now, you read a scripture on Sunday out mm -hmm. of the book of Mark, but I can't remember what scripture it was. But it was talking about James of Zebedee, and then there's James, the brother of... John, yeah, Mark 3. Oh, Mark 3. Uh -huh. So then, this James here is who? The brother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who was yeah. not an original apostle yeah. with the 12. That's a different James. James of Zebedee, the brother uh -huh. of the son of... Yeah, okay. that's a different one. Okay. Who was James in Acts 15? This James here. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. He had a yeah, because remember the, the the apostle James was killed in Acts what you remember oh, Acts twelve okay all right so so that James was killed in Acts twelve and then in Acts fifteen this James came along yeah but this James he was like a pillar yes yes yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, and surprisingly this is one of the people that also rejected Jesus he was the half brother of Jesus you see that. Uh, so, so yeah, good question, good point. Is that say somebody rejected by your own family? And all yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, just read that here, and then also uh, he came into his home because they asked him, "Well, who is?" They said, "Your mother, your brothers are looking for." He said, "Well, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Those that do the will of the will of my father is my mother and my my brothers and my sisters." So, so, so uh, family wasn't a big issue uh, uh, as it pertained to his mission. Okay, there was a mission, there was a goal. All right, and so uh, his family, uh, but although uh, uh, his mother, okay, uh, Mary, uh, did ha uh, believe in her son because she said, go and ask my son when he did his first miracle in John chapter 1, uh, and John chapter 2, and, do, and what he says to do, do. So she understood to some degree what, what was going on because remember now she got pregnant without sleeping with her husband. So leave. she knows, yeah, something. So she knew, so she knew, she knew to some degree something was going on. So, so she understood. She didn't understood so fully, did but she understood. So when did his brother come on after the resurrection? After uh, yeah, I believe. It doesn't specifically say in the Bible, uh, but I believe so. Because at that point, everybody was a believer for the most part. Uh, they believed because they actually were able to see. He said these things, he performed these things, and boom, here he is. And then as Peter was preaching to them about this, you know that person that's saying, Jesus, who you crucified? That is the one that was raised who was Lord in Christ. So so through Peter's preaching and, like, and, and through those, especially the people at that time, it was the United States seeing is believing. So there were a lot of people who saw him after his resurrection. So that will make you believe. right? And, and again, I don't know specifically if he was one of the ones that did that. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, when Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 15, he does talk about, uh, he was saying of Peter and of James, mm -hmm. all right, uh, and above 500 others after his resurrection. So there could have been this James here, yeah. uh, uh, which I uh, specifically think he was talking about the apostle James at that time. But, but yeah, so it doesn't specifically say mm -hmm. here who. Uh, okay, verse 2, we ready to move on? Verse 2? Yeah. All right, here we go. Look at verse 2. Now, my what? Right. Now, brother, now, Paul says the same term, uh, uh, my kindred, okay, he calls it, okay? Uh, and now when Paul says my brother, he's talking about those who are members of the same body. Not so much uh, nationality, but members of the same body, okay? Those who are uh, uh, in Christ, okay? It says, my brother encountered all what? Joy. When ye fall into what? Die of temptation. Die of temptation. Now, the scattered had trials, okay? 
Uh, specifically, when you go back to, let's go back just real briefly here. Go back to Genesis 21. Uh, 22. Uh, look at Genesis 22, look at verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God what? Yes. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I uh, will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and what? Amen. All right, now this is important here now, because he's saying, who's going up? Who's supposed to come back? Both, both of them. No, Just only him, him. but he him. said both of them are coming back. So he had believed that he was going to let him sacrifice. Huh? He believed, he he believed that he was going to come back with him. He bring him back alive. Uh, see that, now, right. this is the key. Because the very uh, 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 existence of what we believe, especially <laughs> as it pertains to Christ, is, is uh, bodily what? Resurrection. All right, which is what Paul was dealing with the Corinthians about in 1 Corinthians 15. Because if Christ be not risen from the dead, we're still yet in our sins. Okay? Yeah. So, so Abraham understood. He didn't know anything about Christ, but he understood the resurrection and he believed it. Okay? Uh, because, again, he said we'll be back. Okay? Now, only one of them was supposed to come back. All right. So, but 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 notice that he had enough faith to just believe that God has said he was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. All right, when you get to Hebrews 11 and 17, I won't go there, but he talks about uh, the Hall of Faith talks about Abraham in this same instance, which is important because James is going to use this same uh, passage of scripture to, to, to fortify his point or strengthen his point about uh, uh, justification without works. He's going to use this same chapter, 22, and we'll, we'll come to it in more detail when we get to James chapter 2. But he's going to use this very same thing to prove that Abraham was not justified by faith alone, but this work showed that Abraham's faith had to work, okay, which was their program, all right, which is totally different than what Paul says, okay, because to Paul, if people say, oh, James is talking about the saved Christian. Uh, that now because we're saved, we ought to produce fruit. And, you know, I, I was talking to another brother the other day, yesterday, matter of fact, maybe this morning. And I said, the problem is we got too many fruit inspectors. Everybody run, running around trying to inspect somebody's fruit. All right? and, and, and not enough people that know truth. Okay, everybody running around trying to inspect somebody's fruit. Oh, that ain't of God. That ain't of God. That ain't of God. And don't even know truth. All right? We got too many fruit inspectors and not enough people that know truth. All right? And so what happens is, every time people look at these verses in James 2, okay, a saved person, if you're truly saved, then you won't act like that. Well, what is truly saved? Where is that found in the Bible? All right? Because if that's the case, then we can, we can attest that nobody is saved if it's based on this truly saved and how they act. Because all of us that are saved, okay, all right, that are saved past tense, all right, will still at some point act the way we ought not to act. Okay, so it has nothing to do with that. Now, faith, all right, because it transformed the mind, okay, ought to produce good works, okay, because that is what God created in us, okay. We're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. All right, now, notice the in Christ Jesus unto good works. So it's sometimes it's impossible for some people to be saved, uh, and do the right thing simply because they don't understand their position in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen. You see that? Amen. And so, 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 so most people they they, they fall off there. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, since we are already back in this olden time, what we call the Old Testament, uh -huh. is there any 
reference why he says then on the third day? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, why do you think? So look what happened on the third day. Absolutely. So, front. so again, all of this, again, everything in your, oh, everything, huh? Shadow things to come. Everything in your Old Testament points to Christ. It's, it, 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 you ask, is it, a, is it a reason why it says the third day? Absolutely, it's a reason. Because, because what was supposed to happen here? Sacrifice. Sacrifice on the what? On the altar. Yep. Okay, on yep. this third day. All of that is the same thing here. Right. See, that's why same thing here. Go to Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Did y'all forget Leviticus? Y'all let me say that wrong? Yeah, I heard that. I'm going to Oh, you I said so? Oh, I heard that it's so <laughs> <laughs> Look at Deuteronomy 4, uh, uh, chapter 4. Never heard that old <laughs> Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 and look at verse 34. The scattered always had trials, but God always brought them through it, just like he will in that tribulation. Okay, Look at four, Deuteronomy 4, verse 34. Look at verse 33. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as though as thou hast heard and lived? Or hath God a say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations? All right. By what? Signs and by what? Wonders and by what? War and by a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm and by great terrors according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Right, unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know the Lord, he is God, that there is none else beside him. Okay, so God always brought them through these temptations, okay, and order and signs and wonders and all these things that people are seeking today that God is no longer doing. God is not showing himself as he did here for the purpose so you can know that he is the Lord. He's already shown that on the cross. You see that? So he's not showing these signs, wonders, and temptations Okay, based on this issue here, there's no need for God to tempt you and do something just to show you who he is. The fact that the sun rises and sets every day shows you who he is, because the invisible things of God are what? Clearly seen. You see that? So there's no need for him to prove himself to you. All right. People, oh, God, just show me a sign that you're there. And then you best trying to get the wrong sign and make the wrong choice. You see that? Yeah, because you will see a sign now. It just won't be the right one. Oh, God, send me this man. Yeah, you'll get a man to come to you. God didn't send him, though. So you better be careful, okay? Because yeah, you'll get one, huh? Yeah, you get a U-turn. Because you'll, you'll get one that comes to you. Trust me, you pray for it. You'll get one that's going to come to you. It just ain't God ain't sent to you. He ain't heaven sent, okay? <laughs> That's by like being in the cemetery and doing all that talking. Right. Yeah. You get what you asking for. You know, all the talking. Right. It's, it's, it ain't gonna be who you act think it is. Either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? People, it, it, it amazes me how people will have a Bible that we can actually see and actually read, but still ask God for all these things. All right. People are just lazy. You, they just want the answer right now. You know, uh, they just want the answer. A lot of times, uh, people at my job that work for me, they'll ask me a question, uh, and a lot of times I'll be like, well, what, what do you think it is? You know, just because you just want the answer. You just want me to just sit up and be, if I do that, you'll never learn. What do you think the answer is? And they'll tell me, okay, but you knew the answer. You just, you know, so a lot of times people are just lazy. That's all that is. You know, so most times people, especially when it comes to the Bible, people are just lazy. I know, I don't remember, I think we did this, so. Sunday. Did we look up the word divers? Different. Yeah, just different. different. Uh, yeah, yeah. We talked about it on Sunday. Sunday. Uh, that's yeah. Right. That's yeah. Go to uh, go to one more. Go to. Uh, and Pastor, yes. you going there? Um, all these signs and wonders that God did for the people back then mm -hmm. that He's not doing today. Right. I, um, why would He do it for them and not for us? Okay. I mean, you know, I know that uh -huh. they require the sign. Mm -hmm. So is well, that 
Well, why do you think that, why did they require a sign? Because they didn't believe. Huh? Faith. Okay, so, it, so, okay, so what is faith? Okay. All right. That's a description of faith, but faith is just believing. Believing God is word. Believing. Okay. And Hebrews eleven and one. That's the description of what that believing God in His word is. Okay. All right. So now, based on that, why would they have? Why would they need signs, and miracles? When did the first one ever start? As far as Israel. Yeah. As far as the Bible period. Before another even oh, way so before that. Water to water. That was it, right? That was the first no, no, that's way even back here. Oh, you mean okay. The first sign. Yeah. First sign of Moses. Uh, the, oh, the that's the first sign he did. That's the first sign. At what? At what? Yeah. 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 Moses? At what point? What did what did it, what was it with Moses? The oh, first miracle that was the recorded staff. in your Bible. Oh, the staff. Well, he huh? smoked the, the rock. The staff, right? Yeah, the staff. staff. Remember the staff? The staff but he, he, the rock. he threw it down and it snake. turned into a snake. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that's Exodus four. Okay. After so now, seven, what was it? Three. What? The miracles. What the plagues? Did, the plagues. Now that's different. Now that's different because he believed because even Mo, the great Moses, now was didn't even believe. Yeah. Okay, so he had to show him a miracle so that he could believe. Now, God, the reason that they get it, to answer your question, and we don't. Go ahead, Dennis. I think you're itching to answer. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> because he's already done way more for us than they, than they ever had. Right. Yeah. Watch, watch it. Back at, yeah, and, and that's true because back at this time, they didn't have a Bible like we have today. Mm -hmm. They didn't have all the things that we can read about today. So now, even if God was to come down and do this today, people still wouldn't believe. It. Sure. That's that's a reason why He doesn't do it today. Okay, so so now even if He did it, they still just like with Lazarus and the rich man. He said, "Let me go back up and tell my brothers. They they ain't gonna believe you anyway." You see that? So so understand that's why He did it here and doesn't need to do it here. Can He? Yeah, He can, but He does not go against His will. He will not do it. Okay, okay. Well, so they, not that He can. They need signs and miracles. Right. They needed it. All right. As a as a testament to their faith. Okay, uh, so now because if you just tell me to walk in this wilderness now, all right, we I'm human. There ain't nothing out here. We could we was in Egypt. We was doing it up. You know, we had all this stuff. We were doing it up, and we had this stuff. But now you're taking us to the wilderness. Yeah, I trust you, but I also see all this stuff in front of me. You see that? So now he performed those miracles to get them to believe, right? And now God says, you know what? All of this stuff I've shown y'all, you still didn't believe me. You still rejected me when I came. You still, uh, you rejected me all the way back here. I came in the form of human flesh. You still reject me. So you know what I'm gonna do now? All right. Based on all this stuff, because the Gentiles had not the law and all this stuff, I'm gonna give them something called grace. All right. And that now I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, 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 want them to walk by just faith, just believing what I said, and I'm gonna give you something that they don't never have to work for, simply because it's based on just faith. God always wanted to deal with them based on faith, but he, they couldn't because they didn't believe. Right. So he did things and to try to enhance their belief in right. him. You would think after the first time, it would be as evident to say, well, well God, no matter what happened, I'm going to trust you. Just like see the people today say, well, if I was back there, wow, there's no way. Yeah, you, yeah, you would have did it. You would have been just like them because you'd probably been following the crowd. Okay, you'd have probably been just like them because because that's the thank you. That's the time now because even now you got a completed Bible. You don't even read it. So 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 it, when the, when the word was walking the earth, you wouldn't even pay attention to him. You don't pay attention to the word now. You see that? So so, but that's a good question. And, right? and I really ask that question to say that. God didn't, he never changes, mm -hmm. but the way he deals with man right. has changed. Right. right, Not that he's changed anything Absolutely. himself, but it's the way he deals with man Absolutely. that has changed. Absolutely. That's why I told Absolutely. Just like when you work for someone, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It just. This is Paul speak about the signs, miracles, and one was for the unbelievers. Right, absolutely. First Corinthians 14, the tongues. Uh, was a sign for the unbelievers. All these people speaking in tongues, uh, when a church full of supposed to be saved people, that's a waste of time. 
You see that? Because understand, the Paul says those signs were for unbelievers, which what? They were. they were. You see that? If you are a believer, what are you looking for a sign for? All right, he's already shown us more than enough, okay? And so that's the point, good point. Well, it's just that uh, humanity now think it's too simple. Yeah, that's the point, yeah. They think it's too simple so because they feel like they want to do something in the flesh to earn it. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to take God at his word, and, and, and you know, we're just living in the best time, I think, with Jesus. Right. You because know, we ain't got to do all that stuff. That's right. And just believe. You know, and the and most, and, but yet uh, Satan make it so, you know, that he, he tricked the people oh, so much that they think that's too simple. Right, right, right. It right. can't be that easy. Right, right. Be that easy. And, and, and the, the beauty, the beauty of that is, uh, the more I know, okay, uh, the more uh, my life, my experience, my walk should change based on what I know. Okay, uh, just go back to the instance of a baby. Uh, when you first train a baby not to touch the stove because it's hot. Now, they don't fully comprehend what you're saying because they don't know, okay? Mm -hmm. So they go and touch it even after you warn them not to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, when they actually touch it or even just come close to it, what happens? Mm -hmm. Now they feel the actual heat. Mm -hmm. So now, what you told them now resonates with their understanding, mm -hmm. okay? So now, guess what? They do better, all right? Mm -hmm. So now, we don't fully understand God and who he is, okay? But when we study the word, the Holy Ghost that lives in us, which teaches us the word, now what we have faith in, okay, now catches up to our understanding. Right. Now we walk differently because we know differently. Amen. You see that? So so understand this. Whenever the mind becomes transformed, the behavior is changed. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, when people can people can say whether when people say about truly saved, now they can say about truly having a renewed mind, okay? Because there are some people that have say they have a renewed mind but don't study the word, all right? Because the only way to renew the mind is through the word, okay? Uh, you can renew your mind through other, other things, and that's what's going to come out. But once you renew your mind through the word, okay, then there's a transformation of the mind and a renewing of the mind, okay? Now my understanding catches up to my faith, right? Paul says that... <clears throat> Paul says that, uh, hear what I say and God give thee understanding, which means that even if you don't quite understand, you ought to what? Believe it. Believe. All right. So once I believe it, even if I don't understand it, now the Holy Ghost, which worketh in me, gives me the understanding. Now my understanding catches up with what I believe. Okay. Because I don't, if, why did the man yet hope for that which he can see? All right. So I believe, even if I don't understand, I believe if it's I'm talking about specifically if it's God. So if I believe now when I get the understanding based on the word, now my behavior changes because it catches up with my faith. I can have faith and no understanding. All right. And be zealous, but without what knowledge. Oh. And it requires me to do the things. All right. As Paul talked about the Jews, it requires me to do the things that I think to be right. Making my own righteousness, which is what most self-righteous religious people are doing. Right. Making their own righteousness because they have no knowledge of, of uh, to go with what they believe. Mm -hmm. You see, that, and that's what makes us transform and makes us act the way we ought to act. is because of the transformation of the mind. Thank you, sir. I also say that in regards to our gospel, if you haven't been accused of easy believism, mm -hmm. you're probably preaching the wrong gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely, because because that's the thing that most people. Oh, that's just too easy. You got to work. You got to do this. Uh, uh, but grace is uh, God's grace isn't e isn't easy because somebody had to pay for that. Okay, which Christ paid for, it, which is why we get it for free. Okay, the things that He freely gives unto us, justification, uh, Romans three twenty four. All right. Uh, all, right, all right, so we'll continue this and pick this up uh, uh, June, uh, I mean, uh, uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> on Wednesday, uh, we'll pick this up. Uh, the shirts have come in also tonight, so I'll pass the, uh, the shirts out to you. Uh, matter of fact, Ronnie, get me one out of the box here, and I'll give the people that's online a preview of what it looks like. The top one should be a little worn. I tried mine on already. <laughs> All right, so so these are uh, the shirts that we'll be wearing on uh, Sunday. Uh, what size is that? This one is an extra large. Yeah, so some, uh -oh, some of you might have got the wrong sizes. And this one looks like at the back with the scripture. 
And uh, I get uh, uh, brother Grant, brother Grant Harvey. Uh, he's a follower out of Seattle, Washington, mm -hmm. and he designed this. Right, he's a graphic designer, Amen. and he designed the front. Okay, Amen. so he allowed us to use it. Uh, yeah, this this was mine. So I tried mine on already. <laughs> All right, so so that's what the, and the shirts will be fifteen dollars. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, put them online sometime uh, next week. Uh, yeah, don't quote me on that, but they'll be online. And for those who watch the video, uh, if you want one, just send me an email. Uh, for those of you who have my number, just send me a text message uh, with your size, and then you can go online uh, to pay for your shirt uh, through the church website. Uh, and so we'll have those for $15, uh, <clears throat> and then we'll have those. So uh, nothing else. All right, we got the two verses today. We're one and a half. All right, yes. Uh, can you pray for... Um James, hold on, let me get his name. A friend, uh, one of the youth from my program, his brother had a uh, severe heart attack. Oh, wow. And he doesn't have any brain function. So, oh, wow. Um, his name is James Dancy. James Dancy. We're definitely going to pray for him. Uh, and also, uh, as I mentioned before, we'll pray for him. Also, my friend Jarvis, who lost his father, uh, will be going down to the funeral on Saturday. Uh, let's continue to pray for him as well. My brother passed Saturday, Ms. Brittany, from Jupiter. Okay. Coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, I'm in the talk with her. Yeah, one of the coaches from G3, her brother, passed on Saturday when we were at the event Saturday. She found out while we were at the event. Uh, we had a field trip for the G3 on uh, Saturday at Malibu, and we were out there with the kids, and uh, she found out at the at Malibu when we were there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'll pray for Brittany. Uh, and my Brit friend Jeffrey, he, he lost his twin sister, Jackie. Uh -huh. uh, she was found dead. In her house in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, wow. She was a social worker at the VA hospital in Little Rock, Arkansas. And Jackie? Jackie. Jackie, okay. Uh, yes. I have a cousin. She was diagnosed with cancer. You given her cancer? Yeah. So okay. Pray for her. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. It definitely will. Definitely will. Jackie is one who passed. It's Jeffrey who needs prayer. Jeffrey is the one, okay. Yeah, because yeah. it was his twin sister. Twin sister, sister. that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, pray for friends and family. Absolutely, and uh, I, I do always, uh, when you guys tell me to pray for somebody, uh, I always make it a habit to pray for those individuals uh, uh, all the time, even if I don't mention it here. I'm constantly praying for the saints, uh, for those of you here and, and everybody. Uh, so I definitely will pray for all of those individuals. Uh, uh, and also, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and once we pray, you know, you still need that business taken care of that we have. Uh, Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll so talk. Sure yeah. Know. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, and all, and for friends and family, the address we won't be here Sunday. The address is eighty six oh six North Twelfth Street, uh, Tampa, Florida three three six zero four. All right. All right. Uh, nothing else. All minds and hearts clear. Uh, Could you repeat right, the address one more time? The address is eighty six oh six North Twelfth Street, Tampa, Florida three three six zero four. All right, we'll have an offering basket to go around, and then we'll pray over it uh, if, if, the, if nothing else. Yeah, you going to leave work early tonight. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, All right uh, let, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your love, your kindness. Father God, we just thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you for the completion of your word, that we may study it out, that we may know you uh, through your word, oh God. Uh, Father God, for those of us who don't study your word, it's impossible to say that we know you. Uh, because uh, for you, you are the word, O oh God. And so we thank you for that now. We uh, thank you for uh, the mind, uh, Father God, to study your word and desire to please you. Uh, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and faith is the only thing that pleases you. Uh, and so we thank you for that now. We ask you uh, continue to touch us, O oh God, strengthen us where we're weak, uh, continue to <clears throat> fill us with the Holy Ghost, O oh God, as we continue to walk this walk. Uh, continue to give us your strength, O oh God, uh, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Uh, Father God, we're living in uh, perilous times now. Uh, things are seen as, they, as they're getting worse. But, Father God, we, you did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we thank you for that now. Uh, we ask that you help us to uh, uh, not act and be as though people say we are, but help us to recognize and realize uh, who we are in Christ. Uh, and the position that we have and the power that we possess uh, we thank you for that now. We actually touch those who we've mentioned before, uh, who are dealing with uh, sickness, uh, who are dealing with uh, uh, bereavement, uh, those with loss of loved ones. We ask you to comfort them now. 
Uh, Father God, comfort them the only way you know how. Uh, give them the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Uh, Father God, we live in the natural, and Father God, we feel pain and we feel hurt. Uh, Father God, none of that compares. Uh, this light affliction does not compare to the glory which we will receive. Uh, we ask right now, even in the midst of uh, 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 the situations that uh, for those who we're praying for, uh, that your name be glorified even in the midst. Uh, we ask right now, in Jesus' name we do pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 All right, so thank you.